Darlington transistors. It's not a type of transistor, it's an arrangement of transistors. In fact, it's a series arrangement of transistors. Now transistors are three terminal devices. How can you put three terminal devices one after another in series, you say? Let me show you. So let's say I have a regular NPN transistor, and let's say I'm driving a simple LED with it. So we'll have our nice high side switch, just like usual, and then the base to emitter junction will be a regular switch, or in this case, a button, also known as a momentary switch. So we have our button here, when it's pressed, we have a resistor limiting the current. It'll forward bias the base to emitter junction, which will light the LED. Now, that's all fine and dandy, but transistors, remember, regular ones, BJTs, are current driven. They are voltage switched. You need to forward bias this junction in order to turn it on, but that only takes 0.7 or so volts. The resistor is taking the other 4.3. Once the junction is biased, the transistor does not care how much voltage is left over in the circuit. It does not care. The voltage from here only matters because you've got a resistor and that determines how much current is going through the junction. So let's say you have this wonderful setup, but let's say you don't have enough current. Well, your resistor's wrong, isn't it? What if this is a touch switch? What if you want somebody to touch your device and have it light up? The human body has multiple mega ohms of resistance, even over the surface of one single finger. You can get it down to a mega ohm if you're nice and sweaty. If you just took a bath, then maybe a little less, but still, it's a lot of resistance. So there may actually be not enough current to drive this transistor, or not enough current to drive it enough. There might be enough to turn on the transistor, but not as much as you'd like. Well, before I explain Darlington transistors, why is this resistor here? If this is a touch switch and the human body has mega ohms of resistance in case somebody spills a drink on your device. If it shorts across the switch, then you've still got the resistor to make sure that your little display does not catch fire at the science fair. So how do we fix this? Well, we daisy chain the transistors. Remember how a transistor magnifies current in its normal usage here? The current through base to emitter is the current through the collector to emitter, but it's multiplied by a beta factor that's determined by the transistor. So let's have another. And we're going to switch the LED to the second one, out to negative. So now this is the high side switch for the LED. And we're going to connect this one, again with a basic resistor, through to positive power, and this is to limit the current. Now again, normally you wouldn't need this. You don't need this resistor and you don't need this resistor, because this resistor is unnecessary because either the switch is open, the button is open, or the human body has plenty of resistance. And this resistor is unneeded because the entire reason we're doing this is we're not getting enough current flow through this transistor to light the LED or light it enough. So obviously, even though it's a short circuit, it won't matter. But again, if there's a short, it's nice to have a little safety. These two are safety resistors. But what do we do with this? A little trick. So we now have an extended control signal. Through this resistor is power, through this resistor is power and the load, but if we trace our control signal all the way from positive power through a safety resistor through the switch into the base to emitter junction, which is being forward biased, into the base to emitter junction, which is being forward biased, to negative. And that's why it's being forward biased, because you've got negative directly through, directly through with a resistor. So there you go. That is how you daisy chain transistors. You daisy chain their control. So once you have forward biased and turn this on, all that matters is the current through the base to emitter junction. Let's call this transistor one. So this is current of base one. And then we have the current through collector one. And then we have our math. The current through base one times beta one equals the current through collector one. Beta one, the beta of this transistor is just a value that is determined by its construction. It's in the spec sheet. You can plug it in and see what it is, but it's just a number or a graph, but we can approximate it with one number that determines how much the collector current can be, the magnification. But we have another transistor, which has its own base and collector currents through base two, because this will be transistor two, current through collector two. Current base two times beta two equals current collector two. Current through collector two is our load current. Now, 
This is only the maximum. We're doing multiplying of multiplying here. Remember, so this resistor is going to limit how much current at maximum can go through. You've got the forward voltage drop through the transistor, the drop through the LED, the remaining voltage proportional with the resistance determines the maximum current that would flow if this was just a diode with that particular voltage drop. So the current through C2, the current through collector two will be less than or equal to whatever this resistor determines. So if the current through C2 number is high enough, it'll just act as an open switch, essentially saturation mode, but not actually being in saturation. It'll be an active mode, amplify mode, but it will be letting all the current through, which is good because that's faster switching. Actually saturating a transistor is generally bad, but it has its uses. So what does this do for us? Well, what is the base current here? Well, it's the emitter current here because it's going through there. The the emitter current is the base here plus the collector here. IB plus IC equals IE. But let's not even worry about B1. Let's just forget about that. Let's make this math simpler because we're trying to just make sure it's big enough. We don't care the actual value. We just want to make sure it's enough. So let's just say that the current through base two is the current through collector one. So instead of the current through base two, we have current collector one because it's going through this transistor and into the base. But what is collector one current? It's IB1 times B1. So the current through collector two which is our load, equals, in fact, be accurate, greater than or equal to, because we're ignoring the base just so I don't have to write as much in this very small space. IC1, which is IB1 times beta1, current through base1 times beta1 times beta2. So if beta is 100, that's 10,000. So we are amplifying the current in two stages. That's how it works. You're just amplifying current. So the base current is determined by this resistor and this resistor, which is the human body, goes in here, which magnifies this current coming through power through this resistor. So we get a magnified current out of this emitter. It goes through into this base, which then magnifies this current with the magnified current. And there you go. So let's see it in action. So the first thing to do is measure the resistance to the human body, just to illustrate. So here I have my standard meter with the nice backlight. So let me turn that to the maximum resistance setting. If I connect the probes together, we get zero. So that confirms it's working. And now I touch it, I'm getting a mega ohm and it's going down, right? Going up, it's settled a little bit, but it'll keep going down if I keep holding this. The reason for that is my finger is sweating. The whole body is sweating all the time. It's just sweating a tiny bit and it evaporates immediately. So we don't realize it. But if you hold your fingers together, the water can't evaporate until you open your fingers. So it gets a little wet. And now that I've let my fingers dry a bit, see it takes a minute to go back down. If I connect it across my body, we're getting a much higher one that's again going down, but it's mega ohms. So therein lies your problem. So let's illustrate the problem with the circuit. My power is turned on to five volts, maximum of 10 milliamp draw. So first we'll confirm that the LED works. So I'll connect through a 1K resistor into an LED and back out. This is going to be our load. So it's drawing about five milliamps or so just to power the LED. So that's great. So now let's make a single transistor switch. So through the power, through the resistor, resistor to LED, LED to transistor and transistor out to power. This is now our low side switch. So then the base connection from power through a 10K resistor, out the 10K resistor to the base, LED lights. But instead of connecting directly to the base, let's connect through my finger. Let's make a wire to the base. And you'll notice if I touch these, the LED lights, but it lights pretty dimly. Now my power supply going through the transistor, both resistors and this LED is only drawing one-ish milliamp. If I do it across my body, it's not even rounding up to one milliamp. This is just a bright LED, but you can see it's barely drawing. If I touch it very weakly, super, super weakly, it's dim, it's flickering, it's a really bad touch switch. Imagine the touch switch like this. It's really not that sensitive. It's just not good. We need more. So now let's redo our circuit. I'm going from positive power through a 10K resistor, out the resistor into the first transistor, out of that transistor into the base of the second transistor and from there to negative power. So that is the Darlington setup. That's the daisy chain. So the second transistor needs input. So that is positive power into the 1K resistor, out of the 1K resistor into the LED, out of the LED into the input of the second transistor. So that 
is our low side switch. And of course it's still not on because the first transistor, its throughput is the base input of the second transistor, but I've connected nothing there yet. We need a switch. So I'm going to go from positive power into the 10K resistor. So we're making our final circuit now. Let me not have tension on that wire. So this includes both safety resistors against short circuits, which of course would be in an enclosure. So out of this resistor, that's one end of our touch switch, the input to the base, and you can see there is some small conductance in the human body itself. But let's just do our touch switch. Because see, that's only two, three milliamps. And see, it's going down one milliamp, down to zero. So basically, my body has a bit of charge in it that I'm equalizing out into this thing. But now, of course, if we short the switch, we get six milliamps, right? If I just touch it, we're getting one or less than one. If I short the switch, like it was a real button, we get six. So now we know our maximum draw. And before, remember how it was flickering? and we couldn't get our maximum draw. Now, going across my body with over a mega ohm of resistance, full draw. And quite a solid draw too, if I have a finger. See, I can make it flicker by barely touching, but if I even come barely close, it's fully on. Even if I'm barely gently touching it, get 0.3, touch a little harder 0.6. I have to really, really work with my shaky finger to touch this so little that I don't get full conductance. And if you needed to, you could add a third transistor. Nothing stopping you. Remember, amplifying the current just amplifies until you reach whatever maximum is going through it. I have the 1K resistor connected through the LED connected through the second transistor. So five volts, one kilo ohm of resistance should be about five milliamps maximum. And then of course, it's drying up to six because I've got separate parts that aren't going through that resistor, the, the base connections and so forth. So that's why it goes up to six. So if you wanted more current flow, you could reduce this resistor. But the point is it's safe. You could put 25 transistors through here. Although your practical limit would be more like six or seven because every transistor's base emitter junction is going to have a voltage drop. So you'll have to have enough voltage to supply all those drops. So if you had eight, nine, 10 transistors, you'd have to supply you know, eight, nine, 10 volts or so. But it's not necessary. If beta one is 100 and beta two is 100, that's already 10,000. So a third transistor would be a million, a million times. That's two SI prefixes. That is gonna magnify anything you need. So just for fun, let's do one more small measurement. Let's illustrate the need for this magnification because we've already established the resistance to the human body. So we can use math to figure out what the current is, but let's actually calculate that. So let me bring this over here and I'm going to turn my meter on to microamps. So I'm going to have the positive of the meter connect the positive power, the negative of the meter to that spot there. We'll stick in a wire into the correct spot. We'll stick in another wire straight to negative power. If I short them, it's going to go up to its current limit because I have a current limiting power supply. Remember to have your current limit set right. But if I go across my body, in fact, my finger right now, 12 microamps. And earlier I was measuring six. This is because it's warmer in here. I turn off the, the AC unit so there's less noise. So I'm sweating a little more. So we've got a nice, see now it's down to nine that I dried my fingers off a little bit. Across my entire body, six with the extra sweat because it's warm. Microamps, single digit microamps. That is why, because if beta is 100, let's say we get the full six microamps through. Let's say we get 10 microamps. So that's times 100 is 100 microamps, 1,000 microamps, which is 1 milliamp. And a nice bright LED is going to draw at least five, let alone whatever other load you've got going through there. That's why Darlington for a touch switch. And now, of course, we have all kinds of fancy, crazy technology, touch capacitive and thermal screens and everything in your cell phone. But you can just do this. Transistors, you don't need fancy technology. Just two transistors, only two. And you can have your own touch control. It'll be a single button, not a whole screen, but it's still touch. It's a nice, easy, cheap way to wire up a touch controlled on button. If you want it to be just like the Xbox 360, for example, where you don't actually push it, you just touch it and it's a button. So that's how you connect transistors in series. The collector to emitter throughput current of one becomes comes the amplified base to emitter control current of the other. Or if you really need amplification, 
perhaps a third. And that's it. Incredibly simple. And as usual, I've taken so much longer to explain this than it needed to. But like I said, if all you wanted to know was what they are and how to make one, you would have Googled it. This is for me to walk you through it and to walk me through it. Remember, this is a documentary of my learning process. So while I go learn something else, I'll be seeing you.